Midnight tonight. Mm -hmm. Hey, everybody, guess what? We go out to California and we go to talk to our old friend, Larry Bubbles Brown. Yay! Yay. How you doing, Bubs? Good, good. I was, uh, you know, last night was, I was watching, I go to bed watching Seinfeld and uh, I've seen him a hundred times. And the, the, last night was the very, the pilot episode. <laughs> Man, that was not good. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't bad. It just hadn't developed. They they knew what they wanted it to be, but you know they didn't even have a lane there. They had a, the waitress was supposed to be the co-star. You know. Yeah. Oh, she was. Wow. That's right. She Elaine wasn't on there. Yeah. Right. No, she wasn't on the first episode. And then when the pit show got picked up, they figured, ah, I think we need a better woman in there, and they got Julia Louis Dreyfus. And immediately the show picked up. But then again, they knew what it was going to be at that point, you know. They had a little sense of it. And they only got, you know, uh, renewals for, six, I think, six episodes maybe was the first run? Four. 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 And then the second one was, I think, maybe six. Yeah. And then the third season was a full season pickup. So when people say, oh, he was on for nine years, not really. No. You know, not nine complete seasons. No. But uh, uh, what a great show to go to sleep with, you know? Yeah, it's kind of like my nightlight now. <laughs> well, no matter what, how many of them you see over again and over again and over again, they're always funny. Mm-hmm. Even though you know what's coming, they're always funny. So, you know, it's amazing. It's just amazing. But uh, So is it the best sitcom ever? I would have to say pretty close, you know. Um, uh, I mean, can you think of another sitcom that's as funny as that? I mean, prior to him, then I would say maybe Mary Tyler Moore was a very funny show. Uh, that was good. Yeah, I saw one of those recently. It didn't seem to hold up well. No, it doesn't hold up as well. But the fact is that it was a, probably the funniest sitcom of all time at that time. But once Seinfeld came along, that became the uh, the thing everything else has to be judged against, you know. Um, and uh, I, I just, you know, I, I, I'm amazed that every time I watch a Seinfeld and I, I have, uh, I have Nets, Netflix and they have all the episodes... Uh, I can just pick any episode, and I'm I'm riveted to it. You know, even though I know it's coming. <laughs> it's amazing, just amazing. So, whatever, you know. Yeah, we were that just show had an amazing uh, a way of picking up hilarious, uh, like one-time episode people, like uh, the crazy Joe Davola and yeah, yeah, and, and uh, Kenny Banya. Oh, Kenny Banya. The best, Jerry. It's the best. Mendy's is I, the best. I, I will be working with him uh, next month. So. Oh, really? Is he w still working as a comic? He does stand up a little. Not he's done. He's done a lot of acting work, but he told. Me Wait a minute. We oh, well, hold on a second. We just lost him. It's my fault. I think it's my fault. I accidentally. No, I, I didn't press a button. And, uh, here we go. Wow. No? Okay. Well, we'll try again. Wow, there is a problem here. Let me put this on uh, pause here for a second while I try and get him back. Okay, folks? Wait a minute. I don't even know how to put it on pause. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay, we just picked. We just got him back, folks. Okay. Uh, hello. I put it on pause, and then I just so they've heard everything we already had to say. Okay, so I was talking about Kenny Banya, how he auditioned for the part, and yeah, yeah. What about auditioning for the part? You didn't tell me that part of it. Oh, he said he when he got the uh, he when he got the call to audition, it was the character was called the world's most obnoxious man, 
And when he went in to read for it, everybody was, everybody was going in the room, and he could hear them. They were all, like, yelling and screaming, and he just went in and played it the opposite way, just kind of a not mean guy, but just really kind of a glomming on kind of character. And that's how he got the part. It was a very, very, very memorable part. And, oh, it's hilarious, yeah. <laughs> it's it's yeah. cold, Jerry. <laughs> But uh, but he isn't really a stand-up, is he? As you said, uh, he actually is. Yeah, he's not a bad. Com- he's a really good comic, actually. But he mu- he did much more acting work. He's been in a lot of movies. Wow. Well, anyway, so that's that's uh, he, good for him. He got a part that people will remember him for. And he's one of the few people. He had like four or six appearances on there. Very few people got more than one. Like the Soup Nazi, he only did one. He only did one. He did two, actually. Uh, well, yeah, the fun, the finale. Okay. The finale, yeah. Which uh, uh, was, uh, what would you think of the finale? I uh, didn't really do it. <laughs> I went back and watched it, you know, and again. And it, it's funnier upon second viewing. Uh, but, but what they were trying to do, <clears throat> I think, if I'm not entirely mistaken is they try to give everybody a final bow. Right. Yeah. You know? And I thought that was rather nice. I mean, how do you end something like that? But I don't know. You don't watch... Um, uh, you never watch Curb Your Enthusiasm because you don't have... Um, I, I've seen some of them, yeah. Well, the final episode, um, Larry David goes to prison. He goes to jail. And he, he's, <laughs> in his, he, <laughs> he's in his cell, and as there, uh, as as he's waiting there, Jerry is let in, and Jerry says, "I got good news for you. I just got you off." And there was a way in which he got him off. Okay, and as they're walking out, he said, "You know, this is probably how we should have ended Seinfeld." <laughs> <laughs> And this was the perfect ending. So really what Larry David wanted to do for his finale was go back and redo approximately the same thing, but correct it so that it's they walk out and it's funny, you know. But yeah, it's uh, funny. The, you know, there, there was, it's hard to say, if I said to you, what's the worst episode of Seinfeld? I can't think of one, you know. Maybe that first episode, you know, it was they were just trying to find themselves. Yeah, I think the uh, the last season, the the ride, the stories were kind of getting a little uh, not believable. So, well, you know that those last two seasons were the seasons without Larry David. That's right. Yeah, and La- but Larry David, here's the thing: he did he wrote most of the episodes. You know, and if not, he wrote them with somebody else. That is just so daunting. The only person I know who did that also and went literally crazy doing it was Aaron Sorkin, with <laughs> with uh, uh, what was the thing about the president? Uh, West Wing. West Wing. Um, he wrote almost every episode. Well, if you do that, after a while, you're going to go just stark raving mad. I, yeah, I don't see how that's possible. You know, um, but uh, you know, so uh, but it, it was such a good show, and it was so well written, and it was so. And when you have somebody like Larry David writing almost every episode, you have a consistency too. You know, that's why when uh, when Larry David went to HBO and did Curb Your Enthusiasm. He had everybody ad lib the show. He didn't write a script for it because he didn't want to. He was sick of writing scripts, and oh, really? wow. he would just write an outline of what was supposed to happen, scene by scene, and that was it. And then he'd hire actors he trusted and have them come in and ad lib it. And the show was probably the second funniest sitcom of all time. And they both made a fortune. Oh my God. Well, they each made. God, I'm trying. I think they all made a half a mil, uh, half a billion, both of them. 
And uh, then uh, Larry got divorced, so he lost a little bit of lost that. Lost half of that. And Jerry kept investing his and with residuals and everything. I think he's now a billionaire. Oh, oh and yeah, Comedians yeah. in Cars with Coffee, that show. Uh-huh. Uh, a complete success. You know, so it was a, a amazing. A billion dollars. Yeah, yeah. That's a thousand million. That's hard to envision. That's a thousand million. That's right. That's right. God. So, uh, no, <clears throat> anyway, I'm going crazy because, you know, I got a whole pile of money and I didn't know what to do with it. So my business manager says, I got a guy in New York. He's the best, Alex. He's the best. I've known him for years. He's been doing business with my clients for 30 years. I've never had a complaint. I said, okay, let's call him. And he took all my money except for about, oh, I don't know, 100000 or something, which he left in the bank, and moved it over into this. And we liquidated all my vanguards and stuff like that and just put it all in this lump sum amount of money, which is in a, a Fidelity account now. Which so far has lost me seven thousand dollars. <laughs> so uh, I don't, I don't know. We should have come into the market about right now. Then I wouldn't have lost anything. I don't know. But I guess it goes up, it goes down. I have to get used to this. Oh, you know. Keep your eye on it. That sounds like a curb your enthusiasm episode. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. But you know, so I. But but I'm not going to leave it in a bank. You you ever look at your bank statements, Larry? Yeah. Is the little thing in there they call monthly interest that they pay you? Point zero zero one percent. Yes, I had thirty three thousand dollars in there, and I looked to see what the monthly interest was on that. It was twenty nine cents. I was going to say thirty cents. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm going, what the fuck? You know, you no, got $33,000 of my money. Now, that's not, I'm not the biggest guy at the bank, okay? But you got $33,000 of my money, which you're using, okay? As long as it's in the bank and I'm not using it, you're using it. And you can only give me $0.29 cents in interest? So as soon as I got a whole influx of money uh, into that account... I had to have somebody take it out and do something with it, you know, because you just don't want to have it sit there. What do I want to do? Start getting, I got 29 cents uh, this month. Maybe on the <laughs> money that I had put in there just recently, I'd get maybe a dollar fifty. And you go, what the hell is that all about? You know? Yeah. Well, you can also take one of our Merrill Lynch uh, things and whatever. No, I don't want your lousy Merrill Lynch thing. You know, so anyway, that that that's what uh, uh, that's what's up with me, and so so far I've lost about I don't know seven thousand dollars, something like that. You know. Well, aren't you going to have some fun with the money? Yeah. Well, as soon as I lose it all, yes. At the you know, <laughs> I'm sure it will be fine. You know, so you, this is just it's been in there for a week, okay, and it's been a bad week, and so that's what happened. <laughs> you know, uh, but it's like a casino. I don't think you can ask for your money back. <laughs> you know? It's like you, maybe I would have done better by just taking all the money to a casino, taking all the money, put it down on uh, uh, a card Rent. table, and hope I could double it. You know, or lose People it all. Have done that, you yeah. know. Because what is a stock market but a big casino? It really is, you know. So, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a, a big on that. But anyway, so I have to, I have to get used to it. It's still, I have a ton of money left, and it doesn't really matter. But geez, Almighty! Uh, and then I went, I bought a new computer. You're the new first person to be uh, recorded on my new computer. Oh, yeah, yeah. What kind is it? it? It's the same as I had before in Apple Studio, but it's a, a higher version of it with more memory. It's faster, all of that. And it's more powerful so that it probably, you know, I won't have problems with it losing memory while I'm doing something. So, 
Anyway, so it's how it's, much did that cost? That ran me sixty five hundred dollars. Oh God. Yeah, but you know, it's kind of like uh, my tool, you know, and so I don't ever think of it as a lot of money. I think of it as uh, it's like if I were a musician, I bought a new violin, you know, a better violin. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's the tool of my trade, and so I that's the most important tool I own. Everything else is is minor. You don't. Ha- funny being a comedian, you don't have any tools really. I mean, you don't have a no. microphone you take around with you or anything like that, right? No. It's just you. It's just me. Yeah. Um. So you don't have any 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 tools. I've always had tools that I needed, uh, at least at home. Uh, yeah, a stand-up comic can pretty much do his act anywhere, anytime. It's uh, one of the few professions that can do that. You're right. All you got to do is have a suitcase. Yeah. You yeah. know. Oh, there, there's your tool of your trade, your suitcase. Suitcase. <laughs> yeah. No, I'll tell you. Before we got here this morning to do this little thing, we do. Um, I was watching Rose w- with uh, Gilbert Gottfried. Those were some of the funniest ever. Uh, I showed it to Marjorie because I said, I want you to see what a roast <laughs> should be. Not that, that Tom Brady piece of crap, but what they should be. And when he got up there, he was relentless. <laughs> no filter. <laughs> no filter at all. Uh, you know, I mean, there is a filter in that it was on Comedy Central, and there were certain limits as to what they could do. But he took it right up to the edge, you know, and was just. And then one of them was the Trump roast. Now there's a guy with no sense of humor about himself. You know. <laughs> How'd that one go? <laughs> well, I mean, he, 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 his whole bit was uh, uh, basically that. Uh, um, <laughs> he's a, he he talked about Trump being an expert in uh, Eastern European whores, <laughs> <laughs> which of course is talking about his wives, you know. And um, I thought it was just wonderful. He was, you know, I, and it was a moment at which I really missed uh, in watching it. Missed Gilbert. He was oh, me just, too. I only, only yeah. met him once on your show. Yeah, I mean, he was, I, you know, I, I, I got to know him even more when I moved to New York City. I knew him in San Francisco when he would come to town and do the show. But I really got to know him here in New York, and I would see him every Christmas at a party that we both went to for a friend. Uh, and we would just stand in the corner and talk for Hours. I mean, really, and not not. He wasn't sitting there being standing there being funny. He was standing there talking to me about you know this thing, that thing, you know, and um, we'd always sit by this ham this guy made and just keep chewing on the ham, and I that, I really miss that, you know. I always looked forward to Christmas time because that was when I was going to have quality time with uh, with uh, Gilbert. Uh-huh. And uh, I I just uh, really miss him. Every Christmas I say, gee, you know, I, I would have been spending this time uh, talking to Gilbert. Um, and uh, I really I really miss him, you know. Yeah, he was part of that short period where we lost uh, Gilbert and Saget and uh, Norm. Yeah, and then earlier we lost, uh, what's his name? Um, uh uh, Louis Anderson? No, 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 no. Uh, the guy told me that if you're going bald, cut your side of, hair, of your hair short because that's preemptive baldness. Uh, he died. He died in a car driven by his daughter. Oh, sh- uh, Schimmel. Schimmel. Sh- Schimmel was just the best. You know, he was to begin with. He was downright hilarious, but he also was just terribly nice. I mean, when I was out of work, I heard from practically nobody. And every time Schimmel would come to town, he would call me and say, let's have lunch. He wanted me to remember that I wasn't forgotten. 
Well, that's a, a true friend. Uh, he, he, no, d uh, more than a true friend, a decent guy, you know? Yeah. Um, that's not to say I didn't hear from you, but you were in the neighborhood, <laughs> you know? But it was, so, I mean, I really, I really like Schimmel. Um, As but, you pointed out, it, it was uh, it's funny, his, his setups were filthy, the punchlines were clean. <laughs> That's yes. The setups were absolutely filthy, and the punchlines were clean. You know, I was at home jerking off, blah 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 blah, blah getting really filthy and everything. And uh, then I called my father, and uh, I said, "Dad, I think I have a, I think I have a, uh, my ass is bleeding." You know, Robert, okay. you're on speakerphone. Yeah, and then the 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 punchline is. Bob, you're on speakerphone. That, you know, that's a perfect example of how the setup was filthy, but the punchline wasn't. Yeah. And then there was Bob Saget, who I always always told people about Saget. I said, I know how you, what you think of him with the Olsen twins and that show, I can't remember the name of it. Uh, Full House. Full House. You see, I, you should just come to New York and I'll hire you on as my memory. <laughs> okay, uh, full house, and I said, "This guy, you get him on a stage, and he's the dirtiest comedian you'll ever see." Mm -hmm. And he was. I mean, he was just downright, downright uh, uh, filthy, and uh, that's what he did for a living. And he surprised people because they expected, "Oh, this guy from Full House and whatever." And he just could get so filthy, it was ridiculous. And what he would do in his act, though, is he would constantly apologize for being dirty. <laughs> and that made it all work. You yeah. know, it wasn't just filthy. He was now apologizing for being filthy. And then he would go into something else that was just as filthy. So anyway, that... that and another, another super nice guy. Oh, very nice guy. Uh, you know, we lost a lot of comedians recently, you know? I know. And maybe it's because we're getting older, but a lot of them have been going pretty young. You know, I mean... How old was Gilbert? Gilbert, I think, was maybe 65, 66, something like that. I, I thought he was younger. Wow. Yeah, and he had had something for a while, but didn't tell anybody. And then one day we got the news, Gilbert died. What? You know, it's like, come on, that's, that's impossible. Gilbert was just alive recently. My favorite story about Gilbert is he always used to have this thing with me where whenever he'd do an interview with me or whatever, he would shout out at the top of his voice. Well, everything he did was shouting out at the top of I his know. voice. <laughs> Alex Bennett is still alive. <laughs> And I would, uh, in fact, wait a minute, hold on a second. I think I actually have um, uh, the, I think I have it here. Let me see here. Where is, here we go. Here we go. Alex Bennett is still alive? <laughs> so That's great. Uh, that, that was Gilbert, right? So he would do that all the time on my show, okay? I'm walking down Fifth Avenue. And across the street, I hear this voice go, Alex Bennett is still alive? Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I loved Gilbert. I just loved him. He was terrific. He was the best. It was so funny, when, like when he was on Letterman doing a set, and just he's, his eyes are closed. <laughs> it was just such a funny delivery. Well, i got to tell you quickly, and then we're running out of time here, but... Uh, my greatest moment that I ever remember practically in my life was sitting in high tea at a very famous hotel here in New York with uh, Penn Gillette, Larry Bubbles Brown, and a bunch of other people. I can't remember who were there. And the two of them started in telling jokes, one after the other, back and forth, volleying back and forth. And it was the funniest thing I've ever been involved in. 
literally, I mean, it was one of those kind of things where you had to leave for a while because your sides were hurting so bad. Mm-hmm. And the two of them going back and forth uh, and, and trying to come up with the, the dirtiest joke they could think of, you know. And some of them were long, involved jokes, and some of them were just quick one-liners. And I'm, I'm, I'm sitting between them. And it's like uh, they volleying, volleying them back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It was really a wonderful moment in my life. But anyway, hey, look, we're running out of time here. So yeah, that was uh, fun, though. So it's time for me to tell you to go ahead and get lost. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's Larry Bubbles Brown. Thank you, Larry. Hey, sir. Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, okay, thank you very much, Larry. By the way, I screwed up there. I said that I was at high tea, and I was sitting on one side of me was uh, Penn Jillette. On the other side of me, I said was Larry Bubbles Brown, and I meant to say Gilbert Gottfried. And, and it's funny because Bubbles didn't correct me you know, by saying I wasn't there. You know, so anyway, hello everybody. How are you? How are you? Yeah, boy, it is pollen season here, and I, my eye, see my eyes a little red there. Um, it's just been uh, brutal. I mean, and me, and it, it, what happens? The worst part about um, um, having uh, pollen allergies is that it makes you incredibly tired and it's been just brutal out here for the last couple of weeks so anyway what the hell so anyway we have some people waiting to come on here let me just uh, do something here oh quite a few as a matter of fact uh we have uh let's see here let me make sure that none of them are the the terrible people that try and call sometimes but um, no these are all fine here we go. There's a popping in. Oh wow! There's quite a few. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. There's Vernon Nunn down there, and there's uh, uh, our good friend Jeff and uh, Jason McKenney. Hello, Jason. Good to see you. Uh, Kevin, great to see you. Alan, good to see you. Charlie, how are you all f- right now? Good. 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 Yeah. Do you take allergy pills, Alex? I don't really take allergy pills. I do take uh, uh, a generic Flonase that here, they sell at. Do some here. Let's start. Quite a few. Uh, we have. Uh, let's see here. Let me make sure that none of them are the the ter- Okay. Anyway, uh, thank you, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, where are we? What, what did I say? Oh, yeah, Flonase. Uh, uh, Flonase. Flonase. But I, I take the, uh, uh, the, I go to Costco and they have this stuff. I can't remember what it's called. Wait a minute. Flu take the zone. Yeah. Huh? It's the same thing. It's yeah. Flu take the zone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it, it's cheaper. It's much cheaper than uh, yeah. Flonase. Probably made by Flonase. I'm sure. Probably. The bottles are the same. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so the, the you know I I use that, I try it. Although I find I've kind of become immune to it, you know, it doesn't that work, work yeah. as well. Yeah. I sent I sent Tony Zyrtec. Have you ever tried Zyrtec? Uh, yeah, I have. Oh, uh, and he loves it. He took it today and was able to walk and not have any pollen allergies. So. Yeah. Well, it was uh, gonna make them all wired. Yeah. No, it doesn't. It's a it's a second generation antihistamine. It doesn't make you wired. Doesn't make you drowsy. But it, it doesn't work unless you're Mexican. <laughs> you know, the question is, do, does it work? You know, it works great. I take it yeah. every day because I have year-round allergies, and the days that I miss, I sure know the difference. I think I may have some sitting in my. I'll, I'll send you. I'll send you a hundred of them if you want. Don't worry about it. I I, I think I may have some here, but I'm not sure. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I've never, it's never been one of my, uh, my go-to drugs, but don't okay. understand how we evolve on this planet and now we're allergic to it. What? <laughs> so I don't understand how we evolved on this planet 
and now we're allergic to it. It's you know, fun. that that's a good uh, point you have to make there. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree. It's Mother fun. Nature keeps evolving, trying to get rid of us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Get rid of this virus on the surface. Yeah. But anyway, so I, uh, you know, but anyway, hmm. it makes me, I, I don't know about you, but pollen makes me tired. Uh, me too. You know, makes you drowsy, right? I, just, yeah. I couldn't stay awake today. It was horrible. Mm. I'm so glad I don't have allergies. Well, you know, um, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I had a lot of allergies when I was a kid. I mean, I was I was allergic to my pollen like crazy. So my parents were told by a doctor, if you want to cure him of this, just move to the country. Born and raised. Yeah, and expose <laughs> him to these pollens. And so they moved me to Marin County oh. and acacia trees, which are the worst for pollen, come into bloom. And uh, it is just the worst thing that could ever happen to you. And uh, I went, uh, went there and for about two seasons, I mean, kids could hear me a block away. Oh, here comes, here comes Alex, <laughs> because they could hear me wheezing, you know? But then all of a sudden, no more. And I was also allergic to animals too. So they said, get him a pet. So they got me a cat and within a short time after sneezing and pl getting plugged up and all of that, it went away. And so all those allergies went away. And then when I hit about, I don't know, <laughs> mid forties, they all came back. And I moved to New York. So it was a, probably a different set of pollens. Yep. Uh, I did have uh, cats and I still wasn't allergic to them, but uh, uh, I, it came, it came back, you know, so, and now it's worse than it's ever been, you know, but then they say pollen is worse than it's ever been. So every year, yeah, new record breaker. Yeah. Mm. But you would think it does make a lot of sense that, you know, the world in which we grew up in, we become allergic to, you know, we should have gotten over those allergies by now, but you know, so. How many people here are allergic to pollen and things like that? I know Alan is, Kevin is, oh, just about everybody here. <laughs> no, I don't get much. You don't? Uh, really? Huh? What about the pollen? What about pollen, he said? He doesn't get much. I'm allergic <laughs> to grass. Fantastic. You're allergic to what? Grass. Grass? Yeah. Just to get out of mowing the lawn at home. <laughs> really? Never had to mow the lawn. Grass. Grass is a very common pollen. I'm glad allergic. I'm not allergic to grass, man. <laughs> <laughs> not that one. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, just the, like, I, I like mowing the lawn, too. Mold in the fall just like makes me sneeze wait, a little wait, bit. Wait a minute, hold that's, on a second. You, li you like mow mowing the lawn? Why? Yeah. It, I just like mowing the lawn. It smells good when it's cut oh, and everything oh, else. Yeah, but do, fun, do, you have, do you have like some kind of a really special lawn mower you use? or No. Just one of no, the. I got an electric one now. Oh, oh an electric one. Okay. I so, got a zero turn. I love it. Well, I yeah, see, I'd like to have one, but I don't got big enough lawn. For I that. see these ads on TV for like uh, uh, steel mowers and so on, you know, and they mm -hmm. talk about how, uh, gee, it's uh, good for two hours on a charge and it turns on a dime and all of that. And then I suddenly am sitting here wishing I owned a lawn. <laughs> <laughs> It's fun, man. Get out there and cut the grass. I, and, love, I love gadgets, and that's the end all of gadgets, man. It turns on a dime. It, it runs two hours get on a Get me a charge. big old lawn so I can get a lawnmower. Yeah. But, uh, then I can take more uh, Aller Clear from Costco. <laughs> yeah. Aller Clear? Yeah. That's, yep. that's, that's the cheapo, cheapo Zyrtec. Or, uh, no, it's cheapo Claritin. Yeah. Cheapo take it four of them a day. Yeah. Zyrtec's a little stronger, I find. So. Really? I have to I was try put some. on the Aller Clear years ago. And I, I may have some, every day. I may have some Zyrtec sitting in the look, cabinet. Look on your here. porch this Sunday. You'll have some. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Santa uh, Allen. Yeah. Well, no. He's he's he, he's the serial um, Amazoner. Uh, all yeah. of a sudden, something will show up on my front porch and in my front front. Jelly porch. was not me. That was Kevin. Jelly was Kevin. Jam. Jam. Yeah. Jam, Joey. Yeah. So, anyway. Hello, uh, Vernon. How are you? 
Oh, I'm just uh, uh, <clears throat> guilty as charged. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So uh, uh, what's new with you down there in Kentucky? Oh, not a whole lot. Uh, I had to go to a visitation today from a ham radio friend of mine who passed away. He actually got me started when I was a teenager. He lived up the street from me, and he had this big old tower in his backyard and everything. And, of course, being curious, I kind of walked over and knocked on his door, and he showed me all of his equipment and everything. Well, he passed away at 85 last Friday. Wow. What did he die of? Uh, I'm not sure other than loneliness. Really? He and his wife he and his wife were married for 45 years and she died and then he had a girlfriend for a couple of years and then the girlfriend died. Oh boy. Oh and god. So yeah. And and how how long ago did she die? Uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah, well usually what happens is somebody, you know, people are married to, for all their lives, all right? And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden one of them dies. Within a very short time the other one dies too. That's I'm partying too hard. No, no, no. <laughs> well, that's why I'm I'm surprised that we, um, uh, former President Carter, is still with us. Yeah. Right. Right. You know, yeah. because he and and his wife were yeah. so close and and so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, joined it's at the all hip. All that peanut butter he ate. Yeah, but I mean, they were joined at the hip. I mean, and they mm -hmm. just loved yeah. each other. Yeah. They used to walk to church together. Yep. Really? Yeah. yeah. Build all those houses together. Yeah. Yeah. They. Yep. He was a phenomenal human being. Yeah. Phenomenal. Especially after he got out of office. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They say he's yeah. the best ex-president we ever had. Mm. Yep. You know. Yep. Uh, he, he walked the walk. You know. He talked and, and talked the worst and one the just walk. got convicted. Hmm? And the worst president that we ever got that got out of office. Couldn't leave that alone, could you? No. Never. <laughs> Couldn't Dude. leave it alone. I, I, I actually didn't bring it up. Somebody else brought him up first. I brought it up. Oh, it was, it was yeah. uh, Vernon, sorry. When did Vernon bring it up? I didn't hear. You asked me how I was, and I said guilty as charged. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. Guilty, I didn't guilty, that. guilty. <laughs> It must be terrible to get be made be guilty thirty four times, you know. Not even clear on one of them. Not even clear no. on one of them. You thought they would have cleared them <clears throat> on uh, I don't know double parking or something, you know. And they he they got them on every one of them. But, well, and if they were uh, unsure about what was going on, they said we got to relook at what that agreement was. I want to. Make sure we're right. Yeah, well, I mean, no, they they did a very uh, they did a very thorough job that jury. But yeah. what I love is the aftermath. What I love today. Did anybody watch Trump's little speech? No. Oh, I turned it on right when he was finishing. I didn't see the whole. My thing. God, I never heard a half hour of nothing being said in my life. Yeah, you have. <laughs> I Listen mean, to Trump yeah, before yeah. you have. <laughs> he bl he blamed everyone yeah. except himself. You sure. know, I mean, That's like, he's the biggest whiniest little bitch there is exactly. out there. It's just yes. give me a break. Exactly. How, how do you look up to this guy and think he's a strong man? No, no, he isn't. He just bitches about every little thing that doesn't go his way. He's the biggest whiner out there. He, well, well, well. Whining little bitch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but he gave this speech today, and he 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 makes statements. A little bitch, you know that uh, 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 such and such is true, and everybody knows it. He always says that, and everybody knows it. I don't know brainwashing. It. I don't know it. He nope. said he was prevented from testifying uh, in his own defense. That's BS. No, he had the opportunity. He could yeah, have, right. and he did say that he chose not to, because they might, you know, throw things back at him and whatever, and so on and so forth. It, and that's the thing too, when they're talking about the trial, like if the prosecution mentions somebody for a witness but does not call them, doesn't the defense still have the right to be able to call that person because the prosecution already brought them into it? Yes, they do. So then, how he keeps on saying, "Oh, well, if they would have brought these people in, if they would have brought these people in, if they would have talked about this." It, no, dude, you could have done the same thing, but you yeah. didn't. Some of the people, and, some of the people who testified for the prosecution, uh, they could have, you know, 
cross-examined, and they didn't. They didn't. Like David Pecker. Yeah, like they, they David Pecker. They didn't, did they? <laughs> I mean, what's that about? What kind of lawyers did he hire? Well, he, of course, he uh, H&R Block, but, you no, know. He um, hired lawyers that did what he told them to do. Yeah. Well, so <laughs> this is all on him. He, he, the one thing he, he probably pay did listen to was not getting up to mm -hmm. testify. Yeah, but, but then he said then, he wasn't allowed to. And what? then today, too, they're saying that he might have broken the gag order again. <laughs> really? Yeah, he didn't mention, uh, what's his name, Cuomo's or Cuomo's or whatever his old attorney's name was. He didn't actually oh, mention him by name, but he was talking straight up about him. Michael Cohen? Michael Cohen? Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So anyway, I mean, you know, um, I watched him do this whiny little crying speech of his and then i go over to fox i decide ah let me see how they're parsing <laughs> this thing i'm telling you though they must have heard a different speech you know <laughs> and the republicans today have been coming back oh i'm ashamed to be an american you know T ted cruz i'm ashamed of being an american today american justice was not served and blah 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 i mean come on to begin with a jury made the decision. This was yeah. the fundamental bulwark of American jurisprudence. But they singled out just getting Democrats in there. They didn't let anybody no. else in. They were just pure Democrats. Oh, that's on, not true. On Fox News last night in the middle of the night, there was a guy that was interviewed that was a Republican that voted for Trump in 2016 on the jury that voted from 2016 and 2020. And so, he was on the jury. He was on the jury. Yeah, and he was he was a uh, he was he read Truth Social every day, but he still convicted Trump <laughs> because it, of it, evidence. It's so I, cut and dry. It's not. <laughs> well, you know, you have no, to no, no. you have to hand it to people like him, who when they 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 may be <clears throat> pro Trump and they spew what <laughs> Trump has to say and read Truth Social and everything, but when they're then asked to be a juror. They take it seriously, yeah. you know, and they, they, they say, well, as much as I love this man, as much as I want to get down on my hands and knees and, and fillet him, uh, I, uh, you know, I, I got to, I, I'm a, now a juror. I've got to do the right thing. I mean, I was amazed that every count, you know, came down every that way. way, you know, that Maybe I they should have added some more. Huh? <laughs> Maybe they should have added some more. Well, you know, but I mean, uh, it, well, it, it was a documents case from the get go. And so yeah. they couldn't add any more documents than the ones right. they had. Right. They yeah. actually said that the, the, uh, Alvin, whatever his name, right. the DA, right. everybody, everybody was putting down, uh, Cohen. He said, we actually didn't need him to testify because, uh, we had all the documents that we needed already to prove it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, Plus uh, other other witnesses that they called before Michael Cohen corroborated everything he said. Right? All all that all that Cohen did, and he didn't. You don't even have to believe that he tells the truth. All that he did was corroborate what had already been said by yeah. other people. And he was kind of the guy on the inside on the day to day of this thing, and he just guided you through it. But you didn't have to believe a word he said, and still you would find Trump guilty. You know, so yeah, I mean, the, the only thing it, the only thing about Cohen was, and it sort of seemed like he was trying to get revenge from Trump. So that was a little worried when when he was talking. But well, wouldn't you if your family was threatened through this yeah. whole thing? You know. Oh yeah. Isn't that a logical reaction? You definitely. Know, I mean, definitely. But you know, the prosecution or the defense would would you know say that oh he's just after Trump because of that. So. Yeah. Yeah, but, but he brought the documents. Yeah, he had proof. Yeah. So anyway, you know, I mean, uh, uh, just listening to these people, listening to the Republicans who are defending him. I mean, come on, the guy was found guilty of a felony, and it wasn't. It wasn't a phony trial. It was all on the up and up, and then the the way they vilify this judge who did everything he could to accommodate Trump, you know? I mean, he, 
a really good, decent judge, okay, who wanted to have a fair trial. And Trump made it very hard for him. Now, here's where Trump is in trouble. What's coming up? What's coming up on July 11th? Sentencing. It, well, is a sentencing hearing. And in the meantime, he has, a, he has to go down to his parole officer or whatever <laughs> to have, a, have them write up how they feel about Donald Trump and how he's doing and so on. And they give it to the defense, they give it to the prosecution, they give it to the judge, and all these things will be weighed in to decide what kind of sentence he would get. Now, in, under normal conditions, this guy was president of the United States. I, after I don't think he has to do anything. Can I finish so what I'm saying? He was president of the United States. He's a family man, in quotes, <laughs> uh, a family man. And he has all those things that if you went into court uh, with these kind of charges against you, they would probably say, okay, well, we'll give you uh, uh, probation. You know, we won't send you off to jail. But the thing is that all the things he's been doing in court and when he's out of court and the way he disparages the court system, he doesn't sh look like a... Uh, a person who's been found guilty who wants to say to the judge, well, I'll be a better person next time, you know. Uh, no. Well, he Found in contempt ten times. Yeah, but uh, that's, yeah. Not the, that, that's not the only point. I mean, the point is he is not put, setting himself up for a good deal because the judge can look at him and say, listen, you have no sense that maybe you were wrong. You no know, remorse. No remorse, you know. And plus, you're striking out at everybody and at the system, okay? So really, you're not the person, kind of person we can trust, you know? So, I mean, it's just, it, it just amazing. He's going to walk away with probation. He will walk away with some kind of probation, but what Hopefully that is... Hopefully a tether, too, though. But then at the same time, he's going to probably go up to people and be like, Look at me, I got a tether. I know what it's like. Vote for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, it's, uh, yes, yes, uh, uh, Alan. He, he, you said that he had the, the judge is waiting for his probation officer to report on him before they sentence him. Mm -hmm. That's not that's not correct. He's not been ordered into probation yet. That's but it's not probation. That, I'm using the wrong term, but he has to go for a meeting with a... Uh, a, a Court official. Court official. Court official. Court official. Oh, yeah. yes, that, that, that he does. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I, I thought they said he was probation, but, you know. Probation's punishment. So that, 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 that would come if the judge wanted to give him probation or. But he has like to go that. to some meeting with these people and oh, sit sure. down. Probably got to get new lawyers. And ba basically throw himself on the mercy of the court. You know, yeah, right. and say, "Hey, I'm a I'm a changed person. I understand what I did wrong." I or found whatever. God. Yeah. All you. All yeah. You, right. All you have see to the do Bible. Is... You can buy one <laughs> for sixty dollars. <laughs> I found God. You know, it, Burned it upside down. Yeah, it's just amazing, amazing to me that he he's he's doing he's setting himself up to get literally thrown in jail. You know, mm -hmm. maybe he'll give him a couple of months. You know, as a right curse is preparing. <laughs> That's good. I feel sorry for the Secret Service people that have to be there with them. Nah. In one yeah. week. And if, if they ever were to do any time behind jail, behind bars, it'd probably be a week, and that'd be it. No, though. I, I think I think they're required to be with him. Uh, Who, who's gonna do his hair? Who's gonna do his hair if he has to go into jail for a week? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he can get somebody named Bubba in his cell to do it for him. <laughs> do corn rolls? He can do corn rolls or something. Corn yeah, rolls. No, that, he, that would be funny. He better be glad that he has enough of those MAGA hats to cover it. You know? oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's what he does with the MAGA hat anyway. When he doesn't feel like doing his hair, he just puts the MAGA hat on. And maybe he'll decide to shave his head because it's just not worth it. And then you can see where they did the scalp reduction down the center of his head. So he looks like a penis. 
Oh my god. I, I bet if you were to shave his head, he would look like a penis because well, he has a scar down the center of his head from scalp reduction. Although I don't think it's the greatest thing in the world, at least wear a hairpiece. Don't do what you're doing now. That I part, no I saw him today, he was giving his speech, and that part now is down almost around his knees. You know? I mean, it's just ridiculous how he tries to, you know, prevent people from, you know, knowing that he's, well, essentially bald. But anyway. Mm. Yeah. So, Alex, you didn't talk about how the Jews are taking over Mexico? Yeah. You, you're, you're, well, she hasn't been elected yet. She is the woman running for president of Mexico who looks like she's going to be the winner is uh, going to be the first female president of uh, Mexico and also the first Jew to be the president of Mexico. Uh, there goes the religion shift. Well, they're ahead of us, for crying out loud. We haven't even come close to having a Jew as president. You know, so. God bless America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know. Oh, I, I, I saw that the other day, and I was just like, holy crap, I didn't even know that Mexico was having a presidential election because Trump is just dominating the news. Uh, you just Yeah, you can't get away from him dominating the news, and that's the terrible part of it all. But then the latest thing is he, he claims, he says, that since last night when he was convicted, he's gotten $38 million in contributions. That's what he said. How that? many people here believe that? I mean, and, and, it could be and, some mobs. And for all the fact that this guy lies through his teeth all the time, we know that. You know, he's a serial liar. The press goes, guess what? He raised $38 million. I mean, I listen to MSNBC. Yeah. Yeah. He raised $38 million. Well, wait a minute. This is Donald Trump who's saying it. Yeah. Uh, he, he's show like me the God. points. Yeah, show me the receipts. Yeah. <laughs> he also said there were thousands of people across from Trump Tower today in their world. Nobody. Work. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they all had their cigarette lighters and cans of fuel to throw at the building. And then he had he had down in the lobby of Trump Tower his cheering section. He literally a bunch of paid people. actors like when he announced that he was running for president. Yeah. He yeah. had paid actors in the lobby. Well, he was he came around the elevator, the escalator and came and stood at the podium where, where he was using the American flags at, as a wallpaper. Uh, and uh, I was just hoping he would come down that escalator again. You know, remember the inauguration? Yeah. Remember his inauguration? Remember he said there was millions or something like that and they're like record sending yeah. they, they still love to show the aerial view of that uh yeah, yeah i mean just big like it was like a lawn that hadn't been taken care of you know these giant blotches out of it you know um no he said it was more the most people that ever showed up for a uh, inauguration I, I i wonder how much of this does he believe you know and then he just, in the speech today, just giving so many uh, things that were wrong, you know, the just the statistics and so on, that just, uh, just amazing to me. And now, believe it or not, there are people in this country who find him acceptable as president. A felon. They have real low standards, don't they? Well, a felon, a rapist, what else is he? You know, it's only a New York person, huh? It's only a guy in New York. Yeah, blame it on New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it didn't affect New Jersey. So, so right. what is what is his base? About twenty five percent of the voting public, something like that. His about base, twenty five. His mean, base is about twenty five percent, about thirty percent, thirty yeah. something like that. Yeah. Well, the a National third, Science, the National Science Foundation did a survey recently. And 25% of the respondents thought that the sun revolved around the earth. <laughs> That's his base. <laughs> 25%. Really? Yep. And the uh, earth is flat. Ask Trump, he would tell you. <clears throat> well, you know, I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing that the, the, that 
the the uh, there was some statistic came out today. Oh yeah, he was quoting the uh, uh, a Daily uh, Ma Daily Mail, mm -hmm. which is a That's newspaper. A great source. Do you know where it is? UK the mailbox. UK. <laughs> they took a poll overnight. Where? You know. And, and that's the thing, too, when they do all these polls, uh, any of you guys respond to any of these polls when they text message you or any email you or anything? No. no. And the polls have not necessarily proved themselves to be accurate. But, but this was the Daily Mail, which is a British newspaper yeah. owned by, if I believe it's one of Rupert Murdoch's papers, isn't it's a it? tabloid. Yeah, it's a tabloid. And they said and he's now up uh, six more percent after he was found guilty. Boy, they took that awfully fast. Mm -hmm. They came out with that this morning and last night. He was found guilty? Wait a minute. Six percent of ten people. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, I mean, it's just uh, the, the, the kind of lies he tells and so on. And yet his people, they're fine with it. Uh. Yeah. It just shows how many stupid Americans there are. Well, I've yeah. never given no um, shortage of those. I've never given America much credit for smarts. Okay, nope. I mean uh, now I don't know if uh, there are other countries that are dumber than we are, but we certainly are. If we aren't the dumbest country in the world, we're sure working at it. You know. No, we're the dumbest. Huh? Uh, I've told you about my my mother in law who escaped Germany in the forties, right? Yeah. Away from Hitler and all that. Yeah. She's very very paranoid of this. She's she's you know constantly worried about it. She watches the news. She sees what he says, and she says this is this is Hitler reincarnated, and she sees the resemblance of what's going on. And I say, Mom, be calm because there's only twenty five percent of this. There's a lot of nuts out there, but there's not enough nuts. I keep trying to tell her that, that the democracy will will prevail, but she's really paranoid about that not happening. She's well, still I'm, but, yeah. scared but I think about that it. The bad thing is with the internet, you know, more nuts can get can get together. You know, California right. nuts can get together with New York nuts. They're, they're, they're more prevalent on TV. They're more prevalent. You know, the news shows more of the nuts than they do the regular people that are just walking around. And I said, just remember that's going on. If you turn the channel to Fox, you're going to see more of the nuts. And if you turn the channel to NBC, you're going to see more of the normal people, you know, showing the nuts and, you know, that kind of crap. So well, but then I at keep same calming time her got... down. She's, you know, 80 something years old and she's nervous about all that yeah. and she saw it in you know she say, because it. she might have seen she, it before because you, you only have 20 percent that are nuts but then you might have another 20 percent who are just like wusses and won't stand up to anybody and they'll go along yeah. with anybody so now that's 40 percent right. so well, yeah. she she escaped the bombs i mean she was she left she left the bombs. she was supposed to get on a boat and the boat sank and that kind of thing so mm -hmm. Yeah, there's crazy shit that she went through, and she's paranoid of that stuff. Well, I so. don't blame her. It might happen. It could happen. I don't blame her. I saw her. it. I, no. I think that, that uh, she has every reason to be worried. Exactly, yeah, and I keep know. trying to calm her down. And I am actively looking at how to move to Mexico. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah how to retire. What, you want where they're going to have a Jewish uh, president? Come on. <laughs> uh, she can only serve one six-year term. Really? Yeah, I think they speak Spanish in uh, Costa Rica. That would be much yeah, nicer. Costa Rica. Now, Costa Rica now we good. have online right now Bree, who has <laughs> did make the statement a cup about a week ago that he didn't think uh, Trump was going to get convicted. Yep, mm -hmm. he's not. Huh? He's not. He, uh, it, it, there's there's uh, an appeal process. That's number one. So he and has number been two, convicted. Number two. Uh, on all 34, I think he just, I mean, he has to congratulate the Manhattan DA who brought this when he is elected again, because he's got the, this is the best chance he's had. He's dominating all the news cycles around the world. Most people don't even know why. It's just that there's, I brought the law, this meme where he's singing, everybody's laughing. He's the greatest entertainer. It's not just nuts that vote he's for him. He's the it's greatest entertainer. That's going to be big. Oh, he is. That's good. He is uh, that's, for a politician uh, and for politics. 
You know something? I got to tell you, Bruce. Uh, I, I think, number one, you're sadly mistaken about the appeals process. Yep. First of all, he is allowed to appeal. What percentage? Yep. Yes, he is allowed to appeal. But what we know you love Trump. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. What? <laughs> I don't. Wait a minute. Hold, 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 hold on a second. Let me I say. Think, can I say something here? What percentage of of uh, trials or of appeals that go before the appeals court hmm. ever get approved and turned like and and turned around? I'd say it's probably less than 5%. Appeals yeah. courts do not easily turn a, uh -huh. a, 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 a verdict down, you know. So, y yes. Uh, and also, the court that he yeah, has to appeal to has five black women judges on it. <laughs> <laughs> so good luck with that, Donald. Yeah. <laughs> So what happens if he goes to the appeals and he loses his appeals? Are you going to come back here and say I was wrong? Sure. Oh, okay. But he'll still get elected. He won't get elected because I think there's enough of us Americans here who have to live with him and know we have to deal with it day to day, and we don't want to see what happened before happen again. We don't want to see the riots coming back. We don't want to see all the open racism. We don't want to see put somebody in power who probably won't leave well, again. Let me, let me ask Bree this. Isn't there, Bree, Bree, isn't there some part of a, yeah. Bree, is, is Trump good for America? It, in the, in the, he is what we get right now. I'm not, and that, that's and, not the question. That's not the question. No, and he, he is good because he, highlights and exposes the flaws in our system that's him as Bree sits overseas yeah. as he yeah <laughs> as how, as you don't live here anymore now, now i know why phil meyer likes you Bree. Yeah. <laughs> he exposes the flaws by being like, the we, flaw. you know, everybody else he exposed you, you guys totally missed the point you think that he runs everything if he was so powerful how did he even get brought into a court He's not powerful. He's just a right, you know, regular guy. He's got a lot of money, and he's in the media but, all the he, time. Bree, you know what? He was powerful minute, enough to separate wait, wait, children from minute, their parents and never be reunited to their parents. I don't want yeah. to ever see that happen again. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you this, Bree. You, 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 what, what did you just say that he you guys was? Have selective, you have selective memory. You have, I, and you have selective I also have a memory of the, the riots and everything that happened under him. <laughs> pregnancies here in the state of Texas <laughs> and the, idiots he put on the Supreme Court there was a statement that was said on here yeah. the other day about how the, the president doesn't have that much of an effect on the market wait, wait one at a time one at a time Bree. what were you going to say Jason I said the other day you guys mentioned something about somebody mentioned how the president doesn't really have that much of an effect on the market he can't really control the stock market bullshit mm -hmm. there was one time trump opened his fat ass mouth over a week and i lost 30 fucking thousand dollars out of my 401k in one week and so don't tell me the president's mouth doesn't have an effect on the market 30 fucking thousand dollars in one weekend no we, we, why were you invested in trump.com <laughs> 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 oh you get it it's like paper you can just wipe your hiney with it yeah 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 <laughs> not worth anything it's pump and dump you got nothing you know i i, I think one of the sad things is, <laughs> is that uh, jimmy kimmel uh, about, about this country right now is that we're spending so much time talking about this shit and and there's am i yeah. breaking up we're, no, we're spending yeah, so much time talking about this stuff and there, there's so many issues going on if we would spend the amount of energy on those issues we could probably fix something yeah, you're right. Well, that's right. We right. look at New York all the time. And uh, as Trump says, you really think this is, I, first of all, I think when somebody's running for president and they've been a president. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got to take, I got to take umbrage home. with you. I got Historically, take, the crime rate is down. Bree, I have to, I have to take umbrage with you. I live here in New York City. You know, you're not here. And I got to tell you, so I, know I don't see, I, I don't, I don't see the crime that more, much more than it has been in recent years. In fact, I think somebody recently no, said the crime rate is actually down in New York City. Detroit, yeah. too, man. We haven't had this low of a crime rate since 1957. It's generalization. 
there are different types of crime. And by the way, the, the GOP is basically getting away with murder, and you're not looking at it. You're looking at Trump. And they use him as a foil, and everybody falls for it. You, you, have, you never say anything about the GOP in, 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 like in state or in federal. You're always focusing on Trump. You, you totally miss it. They're just no, fooling no. everyone. We'll sit there and call the GOP hypocrites, too, for them sitting to be the same ones who are sitting there saying that he is such a bad person. And then, oh, 10 minutes later, oh, no, let me blow you. You know, no, you know, I don't agree with the stuff that they do. I don't agree with their views on abortion. I don't agree with their views on so many things and giving out freaking welfare to corporations who are multi-billion dollar corporations who make money hand over fist. But yet, God forbid, you give somebody who's starving a couple of bucks. Well, you know, it's amazing. It's amazing mm -hmm. that there are any number of states right now that he's been convicted as a felon that he can't vote in. Yeah. Okay. Florida has already announced that he can well, vote there. Yeah. yeah, but that's Florida. Anyway, the point I'm making is is that isn't it amazing that there are places where he can't vote, but he can run for president? Yeah, <laughs> I'm waiting for this precedent to be set for somebody who is already in prison to say, I'm going to run for president, so you need to release me for, from prison so I can campaign. Yeah, that's what you're saying. Well, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't be released from it. But look, if you don't think that there's a double standard here, the double standard is he's been able to get away with so much shit that the average it's fucking person would be hung for. Yeah. That's the double uh, standard. No. Shot. I could never get away with what he got away with. No, you know, no, no, no. I would never be given the kind of uh, uh, leeway that he was given in this whole trial. Well, they were doing yeah. everything they could yeah. to kind of accommodate think, him. What? If you think this is the if you think this is the end of it, you're wrong. It's 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 open to floodgate. Nobody thinks it's times, the end. There are times yeah, when nobody we said it was the end. Go. There's, there are elites that we let elites go, and they're not prosecuted. I can give you so many examples right, of times when Trump's nobody said it was the doing. end. If we prosecuted them, Trump wouldn't have been doing what he's doing. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. saying that it, 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 it has politics written all over it, and it's custom made for Trump. No, I don't think that's politics written all over it at all. I think, if anything, he's been given more of a leeway. I mean, this whole idea that Biden had him uh, put up on charges to stifle his president, run for, hold on a second, his run for the presidency is so full of crap, it's amazing. Because, you know, it's just not the way that Biden works. He doesn't have a history of doing that sort of thing. Yes. Yeah, yes, yes, Tony. Biden. Yes, Tony. See, here's a question that I can pose to Bree and you guys too. Like, look at Trump, Bree. He was basically still pushing the election was fixed, and so was Rudy. He's outright lying. He's basically playing a shell game. So can I just say to the, I'm going to say this right now. You ready? Rudy Giuliani was in bed with the mob, and it was all a bogus thing that he was getting. I could say whatever I want, like he's doing. You can't just do that. I can't yell fire in a movie theater and get away with it. He's not accountable for anything, and he's still doubling down, Rudy. What do you have to say about that? Yeah, well, I mean, the same thing is true with Trump. He doubles down on everything. That that was Tony's point. Yeah. Yeah. And Trump but never it's... said he didn't commit these crimes. He said it was okay for him to do it. To, he right. never said, and, and, I according didn't to cheat on my. According to Trump, Biden could just whack him, and that's perfectly yeah. legal. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it, really. I say we do it, really. All right. I mean, really. Yeah, right out. Out. Somebody take him out. Really. If that's the way he wants to play. If anything he wants to do and you can't do anything for it, then he could just shoot Trump in the streets and you can't do anything for him because he's I mean, He's literally saying that, like Charlie said. I could shoot somebody in Times Square oh, and I could Fifth Avenue. Yeah. Fifth, Fifth Avenue. Fifth Avenue. Now, Bree, what do you have to say that he keeps saying everything's fixed? Don't you see? He's trying to he's trying to cause the same. You got to remember something. You got to remember something. Trump. That Trump always accuses other people of those yes. th faults that he has. That he does. Yeah. Because yeah. he can never take it. he'll ne this guy Alex. He he. I'd rather you know what Bree. I'd rather vote for Al Capone. Yet, you know why? Look, At least look, I know look, where I'm coming I'll from. I'll be the first one here to say that I have my reservations about Joe Biden. Not. 
of his competency uh, uh, to get things done because, quite frankly, well, the, yeah. hold on a second, the economy is better. A lot of different metrics are much better mm -hmm. since he took office. But I don't mm -hmm. like him for other reasons. I don't like him for his stand on, on Israel. Well, I like, uh, you know. I like Biden because he's a fellow orange. So he's, you know, he's got my vote because he's a Syracuse alum. But so uh, uh, I, Trump's orange. But I think that Trump's orange. Yeah, he's orange, and, uh, <laughs> but not in his alumni. Yes. But uh, but the fact is that I believe he has a. Uh, I I think he was all actually I think he was protected for a long period of time. And I think the deal was if he did not run, he wouldn't. They would not have brought the case. See, that's another conspiracy theory. What are you basing it based on? What? Um, I, I can well, you know that, what I can say well, right what, now. Why is there a time delay? Why wasn't he on day you one? Have when no he proof. Out, this this is the old conspiracy. I can say whatever I want. I don't have to have any facts. You know, it's not a conspiracy. Point. It's a. It's a. It's an opinion. It, but Bree, 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 hold on a second. Bree, it isn't like this case was just brought up yesterday. Exactly. It wasn't like it was set up now. In fact, I think it was even started back uh, during his administration. Yeah, it was directly it was at, right after his administration or just it's before he ended. Out of the sky yeah, yeah. yeah. so I mean, it, it isn't like they were assuming he was going to run for president again and let's go get him now. Exactly. You know. Uh, I think if he had to run, like Hillary, if you remember, there were all these charges that were, people were saying Hillary this, yeah. Hillary that. When she stopped, when she did not win and she didn't run again, all of a sudden we don't hear anything about any of those yeah, cases. It was not bullshit. Bullshit. It continued. I don't know anything about it. Well, you know, I got to I got to tell you something. Well, you're too. on the wrong side of the world. I got to tell you something too. The, yeah. the the wheels of justice move very slowly. As somebody who can tell you that I spent ten years before our court thing was finished for a lousy rental problem. Okay. Yeah. Can you imagine like uh, can you imagine cases against organized crime? You think they do this in six months? This is years of getting people. Uh, yeah. They gotta make but sure yeah, that if you're going to a federal case, you know how long they have to make sure that if you're going federal, they're gonna make sure if they're going, they're not gonna, gonna charge you the unless they feel they can make the the charges stick. Exactly, you can't just be like, hey, we're not sure about this. Yeah. So I mean, the idea. Well, let me ask you this. I mean, why is it that Trump could be our next president again? Why? If everything we well, why? Are because because here, because we are a media-driven society. And this people in this country are you are, are living by the media, and the media is on the whole lying to them. They're not getting a true picture, and they think Donald. They think Don, to this day, and you thought so just when you talked earlier that Donald Trump was a was a billionaire. He's not a billionaire anymore. He doesn't have that kind of money, and he well, probably never really ever he did. You know, it's better for the media. But, but because media. he did the Not apprentice, the because he did the apprentice, they meant, well, he must be good with money. He can run our country. What? <laughs> he can you know, also bankrupt the, only the way casino he or two. Well, he no, he would, he would, no he, he could really balance the budget Trump style if he burned down the country and then got yeah, the wow. insurance yeah. money. I'm telling you, I'd rather, I'd rather vote for Al Capone. I read his biography. He's a better businessman than him. He's not a true. But He's pretty good at life. They kill you if you don't pay. But. I mean, Trump, Trump says, Trump says, you know, Biden's a bumbling, bumbling idiot, can't do anything, right? But then it goes and says that Biden's the one who's taking him down. So I don't know which one he is. Biden can't even train his dog. Well, you think he's going to be able to take him down? Come on. There's... <laughs> There's, you know, there's like a, a hidden hand that does tend, that does work within a dominant ideology. So, for example, yeah. we could say that Jeff Bezos has no say in what the Washington Post reports. And, and if we look at that factually, we have no evidence that Jeff Bezos called up the editor and told him, don't run this story. However, it's in the interest of the people who work at the Post because they know they can look around so we may not have direct evidence but we know that the hidden hand is at work uh this was written by ben Dagdikian in 1986. he has a series of books on it and people just know you know how to behave the reason why you see all those people lined up at the courthouse 
uh, Swami and all them, they're playing for the power. They know that this is the wagon train, and they get attention and attention to media. Sure. You know. They all went to that courtroom auditioning for vice president. <laughs> Who can play the jail cell best key? Hang me next. Hang me <laughs> next. <laughs> Alex, can I ask you guys this question then, Alex, and everybody? Yeah. They're, they're there because they're leading, they're, they're looking at fool's gold in Trump. Alex, after Trump loses, how fast do you think they jump off the Titanic? Within a second. Yeah. Within a yeah, second. They're all fucking and they're throwing sheep. the babies out of the boat, I can tell you that. <laughs> and the, only reason, the sheep. only reason that Trump is running for president again is to keep himself out of jail. <laughs> Yeah, because otherwise a lot of these things would have come to to fruition, and yeah. th he couldn't use the oh I'm running for president, uh, you know. That's a good point. Yeah, oh, no, uh, no, it's uh, it a real point. Yeah, I mean, he can himself, I mean, maybe. Trump is constantly using well, you know, Judge, I have a campaign I'm running. Well, <laughs> okay, why don't you stop running? We'll get on with this trial, okay? You know. And when we finish the trial, you can go back to your campaign. Huh? What? When we finish the trial, you can go back to your campaign. Yes. I'm sorry, but my wife is having a baby. Well, that's the trial very, is that's, part of the campaign. That's how very many times nice. You've gone but, to, but how many you, times have you gone to jury duty and the judge, oh, said, you told them you had to work and the judge <laughs> says, well, you're not working this week. That's right. <laughs> yes. I used to hold my thing. Exactly. I mean, I just think that to begin with, uh, and, and you can't deny this, Bree. Uh, Trump is a major crybaby. I mean, you know, he is a major fucking wuss. You know. He's worse than yeah. you. Huh? <laughs> yeah. No, you're that, right. That's true. Yeah. Is that one of those spy phones? I've never seen it. A phone with five lenses on it. Uh, yeah. Well, it's the it's a KGB phone. phone. No, I think KGB three of those phone. lenses are like the three lenses on this, but then you also have a flash up here and another thing down here, and that probably yeah. makes up for the other two circles he's got there. Oh. Uh, that's a spy phone, KGB phone. That's KGB. A <laughs> it's a burner. <laughs> It's a burner phone. That Breaking Bad is so good. Yeah. Oh, I'm addicted yeah. to it. <laughs> You're really eating Oh, it's so good. Uh, roll, Tony. He's turning man into a crancy. Boy, I, I send him some pills, and he, he calms down and speaks intelligently. The pill worked beautifully, Alan. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I'm going to take him some Marinol. Meat. No, it's actually Z Zyrtec from my allergies. Oh, Alex, I didn't sneeze or have no issues at all. Really? Yeah, really good. I walked the dog about well, five miles. Well, I don't sneeze away. that much, but my eyes are constantly burning. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh I it'll make a difference. Eyes. I took it, nothing. Really? Yeah, well, really I think good. I have some Zyrtec here. I'll try you, it. Sunday, yeah, Sunday, definitely Sunday tried. I tried. I tried one this morning. Zyrtec doesn't work for me anymore. I'm using something with an A. Allegra. Allegra. Allegra? No. no. No, it's some other thing. Well, I'll, Trump doesn't that. start with an A, so what is it? <laughs> uh, it's like Ariane or something. Yeah. It's third I, uh, generation. Zyrtec is second generation. Uh, Z That's correct. Non-drowsy, yeah, so and they work better. The third is now the big one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but mm -hmm. uh, I, um, I... I would move over more, but this song. Uh, I think I tried Zyrtec. I I tried Zyrtec, but uh, I, you know, oh, yeah. the trouble is all of these, if you use them too much, That's what I'm scared they of, yeah. lose their, you know, their ability. Uh, yeah, that's so, right. You got to switch them up. Yeah. But, uh, anyway, so, you know, but uh, let me see here. Anything else in the news? I guess there's nothing else in the news, is there? <laughs> Um, well, did you see where the Louisiana uh, legislature has now took meth mifepristone, the, the morning after pill, and made it a controlled substance like hydrocodone? Wait a minute, how can they do that? Only the pets can make it a controlled substance. Well, my question is, yeah, wouldn't that be something only the uh, only the feds can decide what it, what is and isn't a, a controlled substance? Well, well, doesn't everybody order through online from Canada? Well, that's the other thing, too. So, you know, our, our legislature here in Kentucky passed a law that said if something happened to Mitch McConnell, 
that our Democratic governor would have to appoint a Republican to take his place. That's against the 17th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but they still uh, pass the law. With it, though. But they still pass. Yeah, the law. and somebody will then have to go to the Supreme Court and fight it, and uh, that takes a lot of time. You know, what will happen is the governor will appoint whoever the hell he wants, and then the Republicans will have to take him to court saying that he can't do that, and he'll defend himself, and he'll win. Now, if he just let's just say he has to appoint somebody, and he decides to appoint a Republican. That's okay, right? For them, yes, because we have a supermajority in the legislature. Yeah, okay. Well, what but, if he wants to appoint his own Republican, like... Uh, um, uh, uh, Mayor Garland type of Republican. Hmm. That's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. But, but it, it's one of those situations where we got away from uh, having, having robber barons in the Senate <laughs> with the 17th Amendment. And it was supposed to take the, make it more of a, an even election, statewide election for Senator. And, and, and you know, part of the legislation was that if there's a vacancy, the governor has the power to do this. Yeah. Wow. But isn't it only right that you appoint the party that was already in power? Why is it right? No. Because that's what the people chose. Yeah, well, the next election, it's only until the end of that term in the next election, if the people want to pick another guy, they have the right hey, to do that. And, and that's what I'm saying. So you pick somebody of that party. Well, I say that if like, you, have a, you have a senator and he leaves office and you got to appoint a new one, you should probably appoint somebody of that same party only because that's what people that's voted That's what the for. people selected. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's probably another election coming up in a couple of years, and you can then turn it around. Like I said, and that's where you yeah. just you pick somebody who's a little more friendly to your state. Jason, you need to get I'll a condo for Vernon, too, in Mexico. <laughs> need to get well, what? Give me one case where a Democrat died or, or left office and a Republican governor appointed a Democrat. Yeah. Give me one case of that, then I'll, be, I'll believe you. Yeah, well, uh, uh, dream on. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Anyway, um, so uh, I guess it's time to kind of throw the theme on here. Uh, look at what, oh my Whoa, God, that look at good. that oh feast. I wish I were wow. where he is that right now. That's so good, Bree. It does look good. Wow. Mm -hmm. Too it's bad you're a Trump supporter. I hope there's no uh, uh, any salmonella in that fish. No, I'm kidding. Mercury Maybe you're going to have to clean out your ears. <laughs> I said, who, who did I, I say? I heard. Head. I heard you said you were going to vote for Biden. All right. So, I'm busting your balls, so, Bree. We like it. Why? Why am I voting for him? Uh, because he's got the same hairstyle you do. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one, by honest. Very good. Thank you, Alan. Hey, listen, Jeff, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Appreciate it. Uh, always like it when... Uh, when uh, 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 Jason comes our way and mm -hmm. um, do it more often. You did it. Uh, you also did it on the Monday show too. My schedule might be changing, so I might be coming on Fridays a little oh, more. Okay. Often. Uh, uh, yeah, Kev yeah, yeah. Kevin, thank you. Thank you to Alan. Thank you to Vernon. Always good to see you. Uh, Brian, we can hardly see you anymore, but yeah, wave your hand. There we go. Thanks mm -hmm. for being with us. Thanks to uh, Tony. Thanks to Bree. Thank you for calling us all the way from Indonesia. And finally, the lovely and attractive Charlie Wallace. Everybody wave a big wave goodbye and I'll wave at you, okay? There they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, we'll be having another citizen panel on Monday for our Monday show, which goes out over uh, Facebook. In the meantime, uh, stay tuned for... Amy Manuel, she's next with The Intersection. She'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again also a week, uh, let's see, next uh, Wednesday at same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody.